freaking frock. Rock hard, man. Dead serious. 100 yards. Hot barrel. What? Wow. Oh my gosh. Dude. These sights are amazing. <laughs> Look at this. 100 yards open sights. I don't know if you guys can see it. That's like a one inch group with wolf ammo. AK tech sights. First sight was, or that first target's 45 yards, also amazing. Gotta adjust them a little bit, but man, tech sights just are awesome. Wow. Dudes, I probably wouldn't have believed it unless I shot it myself. A quality AK rifle, iron sights only at 100 yards, shooting steel cased wolf ammunition, group size approximately one inch. What? Iron sights? Dude, if you were to tell me that's what you're shooting with your AK variant rifle, iron sights only 100 yards, whatever position you want, I would be very skeptical. Hey guys, this is of course Nut and Fancy running the Nut and Fancy project TNP for short. Awesome AK accessory coming your way. And yes, the internet has made me a skeptic. Lots of big talk on the internet, right? You guys know that. Everybody shoots one MOA on the internet forums, in YouTube. Their girlfriend looks like a supermodel. Every fish they catch weighs at least 10 pounds. You know how it goes. Talk is cheap. I'm not too impressed by talk here in the Nut and Fancy Project. I always like backing it up with results and actually staying very grounded in philosophies of use, value, cool stuff like that, stuff that matters. Kind of like this. There's the group out of an iron sight AK. Whoa, seriously. Had I not shot it myself, like I said, I wouldn't have believed it. But it is possible, and I started the video off with my astonishment at the group size. I really couldn't believe I was seeing what I was seeing. First up, it's coming out of an SGL 21 762x39 stamped AK. Great gun. Previously reviewed. Highly recommended here in the Nut and Fancy Project. Love the Arsenal guns. Superb quality levels. Uh, 1.5 millimeter stamped receiver. The 76239 is the le less accurate version. On the top there is a pure black with a Bulgarian mag 545 SGL 31. That was the more accurate gun in my testing. It's a more accurate cartridge. So when I get a 1 MOA out of this gun, wow, I, I'm impressed, man. I don't care who's shooting it. I'm talking especially iron sights. You get it out of a scoped rifle, I'm still impressed. By the way, this is a TMP SGL 31. Franken gun, test bed in the Nut and Fancy project. Any worthwhile AK accessories usually get put on this gun. Kind of like these outstanding, and this is what the review is about. Tech sights, model AK 200S model of sights. I'm going to talk about all the specifics, some considerations, upsides, downsides, all the stuff I'll try to do. Kind of an unstructured review. Um, I kind of look like how this gun is looking, man. 
I got plum colored forend on the front. I got an OD Bulgarian mag. Still love those magazines. One of my faves. M249 style of Tapco grip. G2 trigger by Tapco installed now in the TMP SGL31. Love that trigger. However, it has a very indistinct um, break point. It's really hard to tell when the shot's going to go up or, or off. It's kind of like a double action only trigger. Much lighter, about three pounds. There's your G2 trigger review. And then the Tapco adjustable AR-15 stylus stock. Probably making AK purists, purists around the world cringe. However, I love it and it's very practical and it's very capable in the style of shooting I like doing. Okay, in the background, SGL31, pretty much stock. Speaking of stock, do you need to replace the iron sights on an AK rifle? This gun's never been shot though. Check that. It's a good looking gun. SGL31. Love that cartridge too. It's so affordable to shoot. Hit. I'm getting distracted. The AK sights Hit. are okay. They're not awesome in my estimation. I said nice. as much in my reviews, in my AK versus AR-15 series of videos. Very short very nice. um, sight radius. That's the primary disadvantage as I see it. They're very hard to adjust for windage. That's going to be you know, Hit. pretty much on the front. Very thick front sight post. Kind of a very coarse military snap shooting style of sight picture. And by the way, I'm not going to say that other guys with stock AK sights cannot shoot one MOA. I will say it's extremely difficult and I would have to see it to believe it, honestly. Especially with the style of ammo that I just showed you. Wolf steel cased. Alright, so do you need to replace the sights? Well, again, we could get into, I don't know, parameters of first and second kind of cool. You know, first do you need the capability of your AK shooting like a scope with iron sights. What? You heard me right. Your AK can and will shoot if you are a good marksman like a scoped AK with the tech sights installed. I am a believer of tech sights. I became such when I tested the tech sights for the little Marlin 795 rifle. And man, oh man, does that gun shoot good with them, and so does this one. Okay, first and foremost, um, what do you get when you buy the tech sites? I want to talk about the components, I guess now, now or later. Uh, first up, it is, I wouldn't say a detailed installation, but it's not just something you're going to snap on. There's a couple things you're going to have to do to install the tech sites on your AK variant rifle. They have two basic models, AK-100, it's a dual aperture. They say, uh, Larry from tech sites says, whoops, sorry. Larry from TechSight says you have a 100 yard aperture and a 200 yard aperture. And then you have the 200 model of sight. That's what this one is. It's single aperture, 0.62 inches in diameter. I can't really put it straight to the camera because of my angles. Um, that was the one that I preferred, mainly for my philosophy of use in that I'm going to pretty much zero the AK in for one yardage and go with that. The flip aperture I think would prob probably be cool too. Um, those are the two, the two varieties, and then if you have a Yugoslavian-based AK, you're going to have to get a different sight set, and those have the suffix of Y. So if you have an AK um, that's a Yugo, you'll get a, a 100Y or a 200Y. The S versions, like AK200S, I hope I'm not mixing up the numbers, it's easy to do that, fit pretty much all other AKs. Okay, so that's the first decision you're going to have to make. Do I go with dual aperture or single? Um, I think either one's great. I really do. I did not test the dual aperture. I tested the single one. Next decision you're going to have to make, or before you order, is what type of recoil assembly do you have in your AK? Is it a telescoping recoil assembly? Or like in the Arsenal guns, i.e. Russian produced in the Ishvesk factory, is it going to be the uh, articulated wire um, wire articulated recoil spring assembly. That's the best I can do with that. Uh, in other words, I'm not taking this all apart just for time, but inside the recoil assembly, actually I'll, I'll roll in a picture, um, it's articulated in the middle and if you have that version you'll get the standard AK packet. If you have a telescoping recoil assembly you need to specify that in the ordering process. There's parts that Tech Sites has that you can put those in. By the way, the website, tech-sites.com. Okay, and I'll probably roll that as a, I don't know, a banner somewhere in the video. 
Okay, so when you order your AK sight, what you're going to get is a new top cover, first and foremost, because you are moving the rear sight from this location to this location. And there is, therein lies a huge advantage to most of the tech sight models, to be honest with you. And no different is the AK variation here. I'm gaining a ton of sight radius. Uh, when you do that, you're going to remove your original AK siding blade like this, instructions included, and he has a unique uh, way that you're going to compress that rear uh, sight spring so you can slide it out in the milled groove in your gas block. Slide that out. You're going to retain that uh, spring, the rear sight spring, and they have a little retention pin. I'll show you right now that you'll put on there and retain that spring cover so it's a kind of functions as a debris cover. Notice by the way how that little pin they provide is milled out. Okay, that gives you an unobstructed sight picture with your new tech sights. And by the way, um, that's the main reason you're removing that, that blade. Not the main reason, that is why you have to remove it because you're not going to get an unobstructed sight picture. One thing I noticed on this particular arsenal gun is that the gas block is ever so slightly canted. So when I line up my sight picture, I can just get a little glimpse of it on the right hand side. Doesn't include anything, it's just a little picky thing that I'm just laying out there. But that's how that goes. So you're going to take that rear sight blade out. You're going to remove the original top cover. And then he provides you a new recoil spring assembly. And it's this sight part right here. And by the way, this is milled steel. From what, I, from what I can gather, extremely high quality. And I haven't seen anything from tech sites that does not impress me quality-wise. Very squared away stuff. On this gun, that articulated uh, recoil, again, I should have done video with this, but honestly, it's just so much time and work, I'm just going to tell you. By the way, the instructions are pretty good. And if you read their instructions, they have PDF files on their website. They'll tell you how to do all that. Just follow it. It's no big deal. I just removed half of my stock recoil spring assembly and replaced it with his, and then I put in this new one. Basically how this fits and how it uh, adapts to the gun is this fits in the rear trunnion of the receiver. It's milled to fit in the rear trunnion. Immediately the question will arise, is it going to be stable? Is it going to be repeatable? This is not a long-term test review of the AK tech site. That would take me a lot of time not doing it. It's an initial impression, initial review. And from what I can gather and from talking to Larry personally, from his experience and from my research, it is very repeatable. It's going to be very durable. When I fitted into this SGL21, it was a very snug fit going into that trunnion. And I said to myself, hallelujah, I'm glad. I want it to be snug. In fact, I had to take a plastic mallet and tap it, not tap it, smack it into the rear of that trunnion. And I'll tell you guys, it is in there in this particular AK. Now your AK may be different how it fits in there. You might have some side to side movement and because of that Tech Sites has engineered a sideward screw you'll lock in against the trunnion if you need to do that. I didn't need to do it. Uh, you might find that the, uh, that rear trunnion fits very snugly. And I had a little diagram of it about how he mills it off. What you'll have to do, if necessary, is maybe file down very lightly on each side of the sight trunnion and maybe on the bottom he has details in the instructions. Do a little bit at a time, fit it in your trunnion. You don't want a lot of movement. You want it to be snug. Okay? Uh, and after you've removed the rear sight, you tap that in, then you install the front cover and thereby changing the whole takedown procedure of your AK. Some guys may go, oh, I don't want to do that. Uh, I love the takedown and the simplicity of the AK. And I'm going to raise my hand and I'll say, I agree. And that is going to be a disadvantage of the tech site install, is that you have just changed how you're going to field strip your AK. And it is a little bit more involved. You see these two pins on the side? Those are two detent pins that hold the receiver top cover. Those have, I can, I've scratched it up already. Awesome job, nothing fancy. Uh, and you have to depress both of those and they are independent of one, one to another. And then what you'll do is slide your top cover rearward, disengaging it under the shelf 
in the gas block and then you can pop your top cover off. Gone is that just simply depressing the rear uh, recoil spring assembly trunnion and being able to pop your cover off. You're done with that, okay? Uh, it's not a showstopper for me though, especially when you consider the capabilities you achieve. Uh, install for me took about 20 minutes. Put it on the SGL21. Okay, and it's probably going to be about with you. And it'll fit all your other AK variants. Again, if you have a Yugo, it's its own animal. Uh, uh, maybe another disadvantage, I'll go ahead and bring this up now. As you guys know, I like to. I do like the optics, okay? All the accuracy testing of the Arsenal guns were performed with basically this scope right here. It's a very affordable, high value Weaver 2x7, one of the best all around tactical rifle scopes there for the money. A lot better out there, of course, if you're, if you're made of money. Uh, it's mounted on the KV04 Arsenal mount, which I love. However, with tech sights, it's going to be kind of a pain to mount. You cannot mount it, at least with this height of ring, this scope, just sliding it on in my practice. You can't do that. You can dismount the scope, put, put the scope mount on, and then you can mount the scope again, and it's doable. And then that function you would have, and I'm, I'm saying that if you clear the rear sight, you will have an awesome set of backup iron sights. Downside is field strip is a real pain in the butt. Okay, along with that install, I got one of Tech Sight's front AK sights, and I highly recommend you guys do this if you're looking for more precision. And you might as well go for it because if you're putting Tech Sight's on, I'm, I imagine that's what you're after. It's .047 in diameter, and it is excellent. Coupled with the rear aperture of the Tech Sight's AK 200S model great sight picture. Love it. A lot more precise than the big old thick post on a stock AK. Kind of like this. Now if you're really uh, keen on the robustness of the front sight post, then you probably ought to just stick with the stock one. Okay. Uh, in my practice, I in, in my AK shooting, I haven't really found anything that gets in there and breaks that sight post. Uh, I'm still debating whether to put that scope back on or just run this as a pure iron sided version. Uh, okay, one other downside I noticed. Uh, perhaps it's not going to match your receiver. Notice it's light gray parkerized metal. By the way, that top cover is extremely high quality. Thick metal, very, uh, very well constructed, and you're only going to add, I measured it, it's only like three ounces, maybe two and a half ounces total weight with the addition of the tech sites after you subtract the weight of the, the swapped out components. I don't like this bulge right here. Here's why. Because I, as I come in offhand or stronghand and I'm working the bolt back, um, you're going to catch that. And if you're not gloved, you're going to take some meat out of your hand. I guess the idea is to protect that safety so it doesn't accidentally get swapped or switched off. I've never seen that to be a problem in any AK rifle that I've run. Uh, maybe in some it is. Watch for that. I'm debating whether to mill that off or not. Um, but a uh, minor downside. Let me talk a little bit more about the accuracy. To be honest, that one inch, actually to be totally honest, about one and a quarter inch, was probably uh, hard to do repeatedly. Uh, it just is, especially, especially when you take into account, again, that Wolf ammo, which in my testing of the SGL21 was running about two MOA, maybe even three MOA, depending. When I put that Midwest Industries aluminum front end on there. That's what it was shooting. Stock, it shoots better. Uh, here's some other ones. This is 45 yards. G2 trigger, tech sights, model AK200S. Good group, 45 yards. Could you do that with regular iron sights? Uh, yeah, probably. But honestly, for me, much tougher to do. I don't know if it's my eyes. That's a great group. All these are pretty good at 45 yards. Two rounder right in the middle, right there. Remember, this is an AK. It's a stamped receiver AK, right? Um, the, the Arsenal ones are much more accurate than they're given credit, but keeping it real. There's another 100-yard group. Nice. I'm very happy with that. Very happy. There's kind of another one. Not bad. I'm still stoked with that. That's a pretty good group. Remember, iron sights at 100 yards? Yeah, I like it. Oh, and here's a couple full-size manoid targets. 
this is at 100 yards too. Uh, group open up a little bit, but keep in mind, guys, well, well heck, that's not one MOA. Well, no joke. Uh, it's still pretty smoking. You're doing headshots with iron sights with an AK 762 by 39. And with these targets, I have a very distinct aiming point, right? So I can put my sight post right here, float it right on top, very consistent. It resulted in that. This, not so much. I'm aiming at the general area of the head, and that's why you're seeing some vertical dispersion. Okay? Uh, I still like it. I think that's pretty incredible. Could you do that in run and gun? Whew. Be tough. Tough. Iron sights makes it is always tough. They're always tougher to shoot than optics. Here we go. This is pulling it back into 45 yards. Manoid target. And speaking of distinct aiming points, I put some fluorescent circles on there for the exact reason I just said. So I have something to aim at. And you can see it results in tighter groups. And it would have done so at 100 yards. But walking back and forth, testing about 10 other guns yesterday. Exhausting. Oh, sweet. Check that. Tech sights. Loving them. Love the tech sights. Nice group there. Five round group at about 50 yards, 45 specifically. So yeah, it's like shooting a scope without a scope on your AK. I really should have ran it on the SGL 31. It probably would have been like, I don't know, three quarter MOA to 100 yards. That 31 just shoots so accurately. I'm absolutely loving these sights, guys. I, and I gotta be honest, I will love any accessory that makes my weapon system perform better. And in this case, giving me more accuracy, longer sight radius, a more precise sight picture, something I don't think the standard AK sights do. I think it fuzzes out, and you guys can debate, well, it's a faster sight picture. I don't know if I agree with that. I think it's a toss-up. Aperture, stock AK sights. Which one's going to be faster? Eh, I don't know. You know, subject to change and how I'm always learning, but right now I think it's pretty much a toss up. Uh, the disadvantages I think I've identified you're going to have a more complicated takedown. You can't readily put on a scope to your AK. You got a bulge here that might take some meat off your hands, and it takes a little bit to install. And from what I've seen, it's pretty consistent in the trunnion. And I did take it down a couple times, and I shot it, and it was very consistent. The targets I just showed you were after doing that. Um, that recoil spring is pushing that into the trunnion, and if I wiggle it back and forth, you can just see in this SGL 21, really no, well, a little tiny bit side-to-side -side movements. But judging from the accuracy, it doesn't really matter. Um, so if you love the simplicity of iron sights, if you want more preciseness, I would say it's totally worth the money, which by the way is not inexpensive, about $129 I think, currently as of 2011. Keep in mind what you're getting, a new top cover, a milled American made unit, it's a family operation, Larry at Tech Sites and his wife running the show. Dude, I'm impressed, uh, great addition to your AK, especially if you love iron sights. That's a Nut and Fancy review, see ya. Tech sights for the AK-47. First shots, 45 yards. Pin post installed. Not zeroed yet. SGL-31 Tapco furniture. right on. Those are the first shots ever fired, not zeroed. 45 yards tech sights. Now that's how you make AK sights. Holy cow, shooting wolf FMJs. 
722 grain FMJs to be specific. Wow, I'm impressed with that thing. Check that. Almost 50 yards iron sights with an AK. I just got a group just like it at 100 yards. Wolf, 122 grain full metal jacket.